day uh, one of the girls said to me, oh, I just found out there's a nurses association in Jamaica, you know, and uh, I'm just joined up, yeah. will you come along? So I went along and I thought, oh, well, this is a good thing to be, you know, belong to. I didn't know one existed. And you could get swamped, you know, by the English ways, but we maintained our Caribbean feelings and ways of doing things by getting together, really. With, with the black girls, we all used to get together. We cooked our own kind of food, shared everything. It, it was, you know, we, the way we mixed together, because there wasn't many of us. And we, we taught each other about all of each other's cultures. As a Jamaican, we, we used to go and we fry our chicken and, you know, put the seasoning and you fry the chicken and cook it down and that'd be all right. Um, the girls from Barbados would would add sugar to it, you know, and so it had a different taste. And the girls from Guyana used to put a different kind of seasonings in. So it was all different. And whenever a new person came, all the black nurses would come to your room. <laughs> we would we would gather and everybody would tell you what to expect. <laughs> so that's the way we got around not being at home. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't forget about home. It's part of you. This is my daughter, Veronica. And Veronica's <laughs> taken an interest in the kitchen just lately. In, in, in our culture, you know, you, you just, you don't forget about your mom, your mother and your father, brothers and sisters, aunties for that matter. Anybody who needs help, you help if you can, you know. The date is the same, which is the 12th of October. And for the Nurses Association Jamaica, we meet monthly. That's the theme of the lecture, which is May Receive Right, Jamaican Pioneer Nurse. We work with the Jamaica High Commission and we work with the Health Minister in Jamaica because they tell us where the greatest needs are. We as nurses in this country may be able to help a little bit by raising funds and getting together and sharing our experiences for the benefit of others. Well, I think without, without God, you, you can't really exist. You, you can't really su survive, not properly anyway. You've got to have something or someone to turn to. And I think he's the only one. I was in prison and you came to visit me. We have a little lady, Ivy, she's still there. And she's Indian, but she's Christian Indian. And uh, she was really ill before she had an operation. And we used to pray together. And she's got over the operation and now we're praying for her to be able to walk. <laughs> Those changes that they're bringing in now, those long hours, they, they seem to, everything is geared at saving money. They're not sort of a, they're not patient orientated. I think we were more caring. As I said, you know, you stayed until the job's finished. If you were going off duty and somebody was in pain and they couldn't settle and think, um, you, you, your feeling is that you'd stay, you make sure that person gets all the comfort and when they're settled and you feel satisfied, you go home. I feel that there's too much emphasis on paperwork at the moment. The nurse is, is at the desk rather than attending or looking after people. That commitment that we used to have and give, maybe we gave too much. You know, we put up with too much, we gave too much. Um, it's not there anymore. <laughs>